be introduced to talk. I mean, we will uh, hear the uh, talk about uh, the 40 megahertz scouting uh, with uh, deep learning in CMS. And the speaker is Dejan Golubovic. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Yes. <laughs> 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 okay, you have 25 minutes. Uh, you can start if you want. Oh, 25 or 15. I was preparing for 15, but it's, it's okay. Absolutely. You, you're right. I, I, I spoke too quickly. Okay, okay. Okay, can you see the slides? Everything is okay. Can you hear me? Yes, everything is fine. Okay, perfect. Okay, so hello, everybody. My name is Dan, and I'm going to give this talk on behalf of the CMS collaboration. So first of all, thanks to the organizers for putting the effort to make everything work in these circumstances. And I'm happy to be here and to, to present. So um, the idea of the project was to research the applications of uh, deep learning in CMS uh, L1 trigger scouting. And I will present the concept of scouting, the motivation, the history, the schedule, and then the idea of uh, the use of deep learning our goals and data sets and methodology. And in the end, I will talk about our results. Uh, as a background, uh, a little bit about the CMS data acquisition system. Um, the, the idea of the, this system is to have a uh, trigger set two levels, the L1 trigger implemented in uh, custom FPGA boards to provide an initial selection of events and then a high level trigger for a fine grain selection in, uh, uh, in CPUs uh, implemented in software. So um, uh, also on this slide, we can see the, the planned upgrades for the phase two of the CMS to correspond to round four of the LHC and the high luminosity phase. Uh, while this two stage trigger system uh, provides excellent yeah, physics. I, I, for me, the slide is frozen, so. Uh... Yeah, and I was I was going to to say the same. I mean, I see just the first slide. Okay, sorry. Let me see uh, how we can fix that. Um, first, uh, uh, okay, is it is it working now? Can you okay. just flip back and forth if we see this? Uh, uh, okay. No. Share. Okay, I'm no. trying to resume share, but it doesn't work. No, it's working now. It is? Well, we're seeing the slide, slide number four. Yeah, but not, uh, if, if you flip back and forth, then, then it should change. If you go to slide three or slide two, then. Okay, let me see. Um, so now you can, which slide do you see right now? Now we can see your slides, but of course they're in, they're quite yes. small. I don't think Zoom is following the your yeah. presentation mode. What you can maybe do instead is go to uh, maybe it's just get rid of the yeah that yeah, that, that should work like this. I think that that will work. Yeah. Okay. Okay. If it works like this, then we can proceed. Um, okay. So we were here. Um, okay. Uh, so um, I was talking that um, uh, the trigger system uh, provides excellent physics performance, but the idea is, uh, can we find some physics processes that can benefit from an analysis at the full uh, available statistics at the punch crossing rate? And this is where the idea of scouting uh, comes into place. So the idea is to capture data at the punch crossing rate and uh, store parts of that data and then have an analysis essentially analyze partial events at much higher rate than uh, when reading out the full event. So this, the work on this project is towards the next uh, demonstrator in, uh, for, the run, for run three. And the previous demonstrator was in run two in 2018. Uh, about the physics, uh, about the, the motivation behind the scouting, to be honest, I'm not really qualified to discuss a physics case. Uh, the main idea is to find processes that can benefit from high, higher efficiency at the cost of the reduced uh, resolution. Uh, more data, more information about that will be provided in the, in the TDR, which is to be published. And uh, it's, uh, the link is shown here. Another uh, motivation behind the scouting is a technical case. The idea to have a tool for diagnostics of the trigger system and to detect anomalies in the detector. 
So the previous demonstrator ran in uh, run two of the CMS, and the goal was to prove that uh, it's uh, possible to capture intermediate data at the bunch crossing rate and then have an analysis. Um, so intermediate data in uh, global neon trigger was uh, um, captured, and in the, in the next demonstrator is planned to include the data from uh, layer two of uh, calimeter uh, trigger and also Kalman filter barrel neon track finder data. For the phase two, for round four of uh, the LHC, it's planned to capture uh, almost uh, data from almost all components of the trigger system. The scouting architecture consists of various components. We have uh, an input board, which is most interesting for us because this is where we want to impl Im implement deep learning. Uh, and then we have various components to stream, store, and uh, uh, to stream, uh, compress, and store the data. So in the previous demonstration, uh, a uh, Silinx KCU 1500 was used. Um, and now it's planned to be replaced by Micron board, but we'll get to that later. So what is the idea of uh, deep learning in scouting? Inputs to the scouting systems are uh, level one trigger muon objects. And the goal is to have accurate measurements of muon parameters as soon as possible. As uh, scouting doesn't have the access to silicon tracker and pixel detector data, it's not possible to perform the offline reconstruction. Uh, but what might be possible, what uh, we are working on, is to correct L1 trigger muon objects to be as close as possible to the offline reconstructed values. So to train a deep learning model with the L1 trigger muon objects as inputs and the offline reconstructed data as targets to exploit what we learned in, in run two and to be able to have a, a real-time inference in the future. So uh, the uh, parameters which we are interested in are phi, eta, and pt, uh, which come as part of the level one trigger muon objects, and we also have charge. And those will be inputs to our uh, deep learning models. Our targets come from offline reconstructed data, and those are the same parameters, phi, eta, and pt. And we want to have a model that would have the best estimate of these parameters. And for that, we're using Python and various uh, deep learning libraries. So the goal, as in any uh, artificial intelligence model, is to minimize the difference between uh, predictions and targets, in our cases, offline uh, values and model predictions. And we have our baseline, which is the output of the global neon trigger. And we define some metrics how to analyze that. So we are looking at the difference between uh, GMT data and the offline reconstructed values, and then the difference between neural network and the offline reconstructed values. And we want to check the root mean square of that uh, distribution. We want to be sure that it's uh, close to zero and we are looking at the percentage of data in the histogram text. Uh, so to find the best model, we have performed uh, hyperparameter optimization. So hyperparameters are the parameters of the model that can't be trained, uh, such as number of layers, activation functions, uh, optimizers. Uh, so it's important to have a basic uh, infra um, architecture of the model. And for us, this is a multi-layered perception with four inputs and three outputs. Uh, considering that, our models are not very computationally extensive. So it's, uh, we have uh, three hidden layers with 32 uh, hidden nodes each. They contain uh, its dense layers with batch normalization and the ReLU activation function. So we have uh, worked uh, with different combinations of uh, hyperparameters, different loss functions, optimizers to, to achieve the, the best performance. Uh, we have also done uh, five-fold cross-validation to make sure that the selection of test and uh, train sets uh, does not affect the results. So here we can see partial results. We can see some uh, models which we have and uh, their hyperparameters and their results. And we can see our baseline uh, from global neon trigger at the bottom. Uh, the main point here is that all the models are better than our baseline and some models are better than the others. So uh, there's a more detailed table in the backup slides if somebody is interested. Um, so for, um, for our training and evaluation, we were using zero bias data sets from 2017 and 18. And uh, we were using high quality muons with stops at each of the four stations and uh, low PT muons because this is where scouting is most interesting. 
Um, and here we see visually the results shown from the table. Uh, we see in blue the difference between global neuron trigger and the offline, and in red the difference between neural network and the offline reconstructed values. And we see that the neural network provides a significant improvement uh, in terms of the um, data concentrated in the smaller uh, range, in, in a narrow range. And uh, yeah, this is, those are the, the results on the training and uh, on, on our test sets, actually. Uh, but now, in order to show that the neural network corrections actually improve physics results, we use muon pairs of the muonia dataset. And this dataset was collected using L1 trigger and high level trigger, selecting events with pairs of muons with opposite charges. And this dataset contains a reference invariant mass of muon pairs to look for. And this is important for us because we want to compare our neural network mass to the offline mass. And also this um, data set has a very narrow particle resolution peaks. So it's a perfect tool for us to measure the physics results. Um, on this slide, we can see our, uh, our results. We can see the distribution of invariant mass produced by the offline, uh, by the global muon trigger and by the neural network. And the invariant mass is calculated for the same muon pairs. Um, and ideally, we want our neural network to produce a plot similar to the offline um, uh, reconstruction. And we can see on this plot in comparison with the original GMT values that distribution provided by the neural network show, shows peaks closer to the nominal masses of phi and epsilon. And uh, we see a visible bump uh, on the JSI. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, produced by the neural network. So um, those are our uh, results uh, in terms of physics. And uh, uh, still we can see from this plot, we are uh, far from uh, offline values and we are not able to distinguish uh, resonances of the same family, but uh, it shows um, uh, a signs of uh, uh, potential. Uh, here we can see on this, um, uh, on this slide, um, we can see the same plot, but uh, the this, uh, data from the previous plot, but only there is a selection on the offline reconstructed invariant mass. Um, the selection was done in the close surroundings of the particle resonances, JSI and epsilon, and we are showing the distribution of the global neon trigger and the neural network here. And we see that the neural ne network provides uh, um, higher uh, histograms and uh, we can say that they're narrow. Again, they are, um, it, it is a work in progress and uh, uh, better results can be expected in the future. Uh, now, after training the models, we wanted to, we want to implement them on the, on the FPGA based hardware. And uh, to do that, we're using deep learning compilers. Um, we want, um, as we remember, to include the, our, um, to include this deep learning implementation early in the process for scouting. And uh, yeah, this is the next goal. This was the next goal of the project. And to, to implement that, we were using Micron Deep Learning Accelerator, uh, which is consisted of hardware and software parts. So the hardware is a high bandwidth, low latency board, and the software is essentially uh, a Python code to translate the models implemented in Python to be, uh, to be run on the FPGA boards. So um, the idea of Micron solution is to control the, the uh, board from Python code and uh, essentially don't write any VHDL. So this was very useful for us during our development uh, phase. In the production, it will be different, but during uh, execution, this was really helpful because we were able to test all the models on the board from Python. Um, so yeah, this is, and yeah, Micron is a financial contributor to this project, uh, which is worth, worth noting. Um, now, scouting infrastructure with the Micron board. If you remember the slide from before, uh, with the KCU input port, uh, it's planned to be replaced in the next demonstrator with the Micron board, uh, and essentially provide the same, um, um, everything that was done with the KCU, all, all the firmware implementation can be done with the Micron board uh, with the additional deep learning part. 
and the boards have same the same optical connectivity, which is also important to to know. Uh, so to to have a summary, uh, at this project we have trained neural networks using the zero bias data sets from 2017 and 18, and we have demonstrated improvement on resolution on global neon trigger neurons. Uh, we have demonstrated improvement on the resolution of the invariant mass, and we have run our models on using Micron Deep Learning Compiler. So the next steps are to integrate Micron hardware within the scouting infrastructure for the next demonstrator and to run the demonstrator in round three in 2021. Uh, in the end, yeah, I'd like to thank my colleagues for, for the great work on this project, to thank the organizers for the chance to present, and to Micron for a, a financial contribution to this project and to Open Lab for organizing this collaboration. So thank you. Thank you very much. For, for this very interesting talk about the CMS data scouting um, and for staying on time. Uh, the talk is open for, um, for questions. Uh, please use the raise hand if you have a question. Let me uh, ask one thing. I mean, you, you mentioned the, the architecture of the neural net you're, you're setting up. I was wondering, um, was there any concern about the, the latency and, and the processing capabilities of the FPGA cards in the design of that? that yes, yes, we were, yeah, I didn't include that, but uh, we wanted, uh, let me check, I think they have it in the backup. Um, essentially, we want to have uh, over 1 million uh, inferences per, per second. Uh, and with Micron boards, we were able to achieve that. So that's, that's quite good, and this is why it fits into into the into the future plans. Very good. Okay, interesting. Thank you. Uh, are there any other questions before we go to the next talk? That doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, so thank you again for for your talk. Um,